Hey, what's up guys? Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Check the description for all my information. I explain all the algorithms from problems on sites like LeetCode and HackerRank. Uh, I have playlists if you want to check those out. This is a problem called Find All Anagrams in a String. It's 438. It's got a bunch of likes. Given a string S and a non-empty string P. So two strings, S and P. Uh, find all of the starting indices of P's anagrams in S. So it's a little bit confusing. You got to unpack that a little bit. Um, we want to find all of P's anagrams. So all of an the anagrams of P, if you don't know what an anagram is, it's a permutation in this case, basically. It's just a rearrangement of the letters of the string. So P is uh, ABC, for example. So an anagram in this case will be CBA or BAC. Really, it's permutation, and they messed it up in the problem. If you look at what a permutation is, it is a rearrangement of the letters. An anagram is supposed to be a rearrangement of the letters that means something. So it's supposed to actually be a word or something like that. You could read into that. Um, so they actually messed it up here, but that's fine. It's just a permutation, basically. But we are going to be given a string P, like ABC, and we want to find all of the anagrams of it. So like CBA or BAC, right? Those are rearrangements of the letters. Um, and then we want to find the where if if these exist in this bigger string s like the string s here So if these exist in s we want to find the starting indices of each occurrence of each anagram uh, And then we want to put those in a integer list and return that so it's a, a little bit complicated, you know to think about um, But it's not that bad if you just think about it for a few minutes so ABC, like if we would look for ABC in here, right? Where's ABC? I don't see it, right? So here's another one. Here's CBA. That's a rearrangement. Okay, CBA is right at the beginning. So where does CBA start in this string? At index zero. So we put that in the output. Uh, BAC, is that in there? BAC is in there. And that starts at index six. So we put that in there. And those are the two only two anagrams that are in S. If you look here, you could find AB is at index zero it starts. It also starts at index two, zero, one, two. Um, and then also BA is a rearrangement and that is at index one. So you have that output as well. Okay, I think we understand the problem. Um, this is pretty much random. Just their strings aren't gonna be insane and they're made of uh, lowercase English letters. Great. Out order output doesn't matter. So we don't have to care about like where we find the anagrams or anything like that. Great. So let's just start off by making our output array, right? So we're just gonna call it result. It's just gonna be an array list, an integer list. That's because that's what we have to return. Um, they say P is not empty, but they don't say S is not empty. So, uh, you know, you always just wanna check and make sure things aren't empty. So if S.length is equal to zero um, or S is equal to null, we'll just return an empty list. Um, so we'll just return result. Because in this case, you know, P is not going to be found if the string is empty. The anagrams aren't going to be found in the string if it's empty. So just do that check just to be safe. Um, now, anagrams, uh, what we're going to use, the strategy we're going to use to solve this is we're going to make a little hash map uh, using an int array. So you make an int array. I do, this is a very uh, popular strategy for counting all the character frequencies in a string. You make an int array, especially when it's lowercase English uh, letters. You make an int array and you say it's equal to new int of size 26. So there's 26 letters in the alphabet, right? For lowercase English letters, right? A through Z. Now we're gonna store in the int array at each index the frequency of that character. So A would be index zero of the alphabet. Z would be, you know, the last index of the alphabet, 25. Um, so at index zero, we're gonna, sh we're gonna loop through P and put the number of times that it occurs in the string, right? So we have the frequency of each character. Uh, this is popular in a bunch of problems. So for char c and p dot two char array, what we're gonna do is just do char counts. It's an int array. All of them are starting at zero. This whole array is just a bunch of zeros. So we just do char counts of the current character minus a. This is ASCII value. Uh, just does if if it was a minus a, that would just give us zero. So it's just ASCII values minus ASCII values. And uh, when you find this, will get us to the right index in the alphabet for each letter. So a minus a will give us zero, and that's for index a. And you increment that every time you see an a. When you see a b, it'll do b minus a, and that'll give us index one. And then we increment that if we see a b, and then keep going right straightforward. 
Um, that's in a bunch of problems. You can check that out. Now, we're this is going to be a sliding window approach. So basically how we're going to do this is we're going to loop through with boundaries left and right. So we're going to say left and right are equal to zero. And then we're going to have this count variable equal to p dot length. This is the size of the string that we're looking for in S. So when we find a, what we're going to do is we're going to use this frequency table and a sliding window approach. And while we slide our window and we expand our window, if we find a window that has all of the characters in the frequency table, we'll decrement the frequency table and subtract the characters so we get to zero. And it's the size of the string we're looking for, then that means we found one of the anagrams. And we'll keep expanding and moving our window across until we get to the end of the string. So right will be the expanding boundary of our window. Uh, sliding windows are a type of problem. You might wanna get familiar with them before you try and do this. So right's gonna be the ending boundary. So we're gonna say while well, right is less than s.length, the main string.length, because right will hit the end first, right? Um, at the end of this whole loop, we're gonna return the output no matter what. So we're just gonna say return result, right? So as we expand the uh, right boundary, we're also gonna be expanding. Once we find an anagram, we're basically gonna expand the right boundary and then we find an anagram, then we're gonna put the index that it go that we found it at in the result, then we'll move the left boundary and keep, you know, keep looking. Um, so that's the whole strategy. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So here we go. If char counts of s, so if in the frequency table for that uh, for the anagram, if the character at that we're currently looking at in the s string is the value of that, if that is greater than or equal to one, meaning there is one of those characters. So we look at c. And we're, we look it up in this little frequency table we made for A, B, and C. There's obviously one. So if we there is a C in there, that means that's part of the anagram. So what we'll do is, okay, let's decrement that from the frequency table because we're using that. And let's also increment the right boundary and start expanding to look for the rest of the anagram. So as we do this, we also decrement the count. And we decrement the count because once count is equal to zero, what we're going to do, that means we found the whole anagram. So this will keep looping, right? It looks at C, it expands the boundary, then it looks at B, and it's subtracting B and C from the frequency table, then it looks at A, and it finds all three of them, and count is getting decremented each time, so count gets to zero, so then all we have to do is result.add our left boundary. So that's the starting index where we found it, because left will still be at zero. So the right will have expanded all the way to the end, and left will be at the beginning still, and left gets added to that index. Now, once we find count, we have this condition. Okay, one life, right minus left is equal p dot length, which, you know, that's the size of the string we're looking for. So this means the window, once the window expands to the size of the anagram, well, and um, char counts of s dot char at left plus plus, hold on. We're gonna, we're gonna start moving our left boundary once we find the anagram, basically is what I'm trying to write here. Um, and we're going, since, since we are no longer using that character, so like in a sliding window, it's always like you're moving from CBA to BAE, right? You're expanding your left boundary here, right? So we found the whole string. Now we're mo getting rid of that C. So we decremented that from the frequency table, so we have to add that back. So that's why this plus plus is here. And then when you just do greater than or equal to zero, and now that we're only looking at B and A in the sliding window, because we expanded the left now, because we found the whole string, we moved the left boundary over now, we have to we have to uh, add one to count again, right? Because um, if, this, if this was a C right here, that would be B, A, C, and then we could you know, count that, but we have to, we have to increment count because otherwise it's just going to keep adding the left boundary, right? Count will always be zero unless we uh, increment it again. So we increment once we expand, you know, move the left over and yeah, that's the whole approach. I think I did a decent job. I mean, it is a little bit, oh, one thing I missed, sorry. One thing I missed is in the frequency table, you have to do that ASCII uh, subtraction, right? To get the correct index in that int array that has the frequency of each character. So besides that, it should be fine, hopefully. Char counts, error cannot find symbol if, where is this, what line is this? Char counts, if char counts, so that's not char, right, plus plus, minus a, 
Um, minus, minus. What, is it, what can they not find? Char count. Oh, I made a count. It's actually counts. Dang it. Sorry about that. So I'm going to do counts. There. Should be fine. Sorry. Hopefully that didn't ruin the uh, solution for you. But there you go. That's the solution right there. Uh, pretty good solution. It is tricky with these plus pluses and minus minus, you know, all in these lines. Uh, trying to break that down makes it even more hard. So just doing it like this and kind of looking at it and getting it down is just good. So let me know if you guys have any cleaner solutions, better solutions. I feel like this isn't bad once you get the hang of it. It is just a little bit uh, syntax. The syntax of this is just a little bit annoying. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe so I can grow my channel, of course. And as always, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. All right, see you.